Hi, I'm Brian English, forum named Hyperbytes, and in this module we're going to have a look at using the um, environment variables which can be defined within Server Connect settings to inject the settings for your database connections as an alternative way to the way that you're doing it. So we'll just quickly run through the sort of standard way, shall we say. You're going to your project settings you go into your targets and within your targets you will set your database connection settings in this case i have the um, development target using a local cloud database in other words it's running in a docker container and in my production database we have uh, an online database uh, running on a vps it's actually an orange host server when you input these settings into your database settings in your development and production, it effectively automatically injects those settings into two places. It does it within your database connection settings. So if we look at that, we can see there's our local settings, which is created by setting up that uh, project definition screen. And also within your uh, database connections, you can see that it also sets up the connections there. And there may be occasions where you will need to manually edit that um, direct connection from your database connections, um, and you do it from that screen. So uh, just do a quick test, show you that we're uh, ready to rock on that. What I'm going to do now is show you how to, instead of putting actual um, settings into here, the actual settings we're going to do that by defining that within the environment variables and then placing those environment variables into the connection settings i'm going to do that just by creating a new connection if you use this method you actually don't need to input your database settings there you can actually set it to none and it will work perfectly fine because you are manually creating these settings as you go along so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a second setting here um, I'll just call it DB2 I'm in development here so that's going to be a cloud database and then I'm going to put the settings into there so I'll just jump the gun a little bit so I'm just going to close things down here what we're going to do is say, right, we're going to pull them in for environment variables. So where are we going to define those settings? And the answer is that here up in our server connect settings, um, if we click on there, you'll see there's a tab marked environment. Now I'm in development targets here. So I click on environment. And what I've done is I've created five environment variables, your DB host, your DB name, your DB user, DB password, and your DB port. And I've actually pre populated them as well just so you don't have to sit and watch me typing in all of those settings and if i switch into production because those server connect settings are target specific and go into environment we can see we have a completely different set of settings there uh, which are the ones that are required for your um, workflow globals db settings um, for your remote server Lastly, within globals here, we also need to just define those environment variables purely for the picker's sake. So again, I've just defined those five same environment variables within the picker. And that way we can use this now for setting up our um, connection. So I'm going to say create a second database connection. Um, I'm just going to first switch into development. We'll start on the development side. Our database connection, um, DB2. That is a cloud database. Database server is the Maria local, DB local. And we it automatically pulls the settings in here for us because it knows it in the case of cloud databases. Um, but what I actually want to do is show you how to do this via the environment variables. So we're going to take those static values out, save that. I'm going to take that static value out, 
and then I'm going to replace that with DB port. DB user. DB password. And last of all, your DB database. Name that, isn't it? Sorry. So there we are. We have our settings now are all set within environment variables as opposed to our um, fixed settings. We'll pop into our production now. I'm going to ask for the settings there. I'm just going to close that sorry you need to close it to be able to refresh the settings so we decide to, to populate the uh, production with the same but that's not the case we actually this is going to be custom this is going to be a D, my rear DB but we can keep those settings the same and save And that's it folks, that's now created that. So if I now go into workflow, um, just select our development target, um, click that test, database query, I'm gonna now switch that over to DB2, and then I'm gonna run that database query in the browser and there we always see that it works absolutely fine um, in the browser I'm now just going to do a quick deploy um, I'll pause that while it's blown so you quick publish so I'm going to publish I'm going to apply the database changes um, I'm going to hit publish and then I'm, I'll just stick it on pause while this is happening Okay, and that's our uh, publish done. I'm not quite sure why we got that error there. Um, probably because I'm double publishing that. I probably shouldn't have uh, used that apply database changes at this stage. Um, so, right, so now we should be able to just pop into our production server now using a DB2 setting and Click on that and there we are finally we get the uh, response from the server um, that's my internet connection which is running a bit like a dog at the minute um, so there we are that's how we uh, set up our database connection settings via our environment variables um, fairly straightforward just gonna have a quick look at our database manager settings um, if I go into development as we discussed earlier we can edit those database connection settings but you'll notice there are no dynamic settings in there so we can't pull that from the environment variables um, a little confused as to what the teams told me they tell me that's the settings are not connection specific but of course if we go into our production we'll see this is grayed out and that's because it's, it was a decision made by the Wappler team that they would not allow you to edit production set database connection settings easy way around that go into your project your settings and then just change your production temporarily and set it as a development platform when you do that you can now see your database connection goes live and you can see then that we have the um, database connection settings for direct connection from your um, database manager and again if we test that we can see obviously that works save that so we now we can do that we know how to edit that um, 
once we've done that again the, the Twapla team do say you shouldn't edit data through the database manager on the live situation um, but I'm just going to call up the people table in the development zone and I happen to know there are two records in there in that development zone if I was to switch to production and view edit data you'll see there's only one record because we're actually accessing the remote server now I know the Wapler team say you shouldn't do that they should recommend you use something like you know workbench or uh, Navicat or whatever to remote edit your remote data but just sometimes I like to be able to pop into the live data from within the Wapler environment and just make a small edit um, rather than having to leave Wapler go into an alternative platform to do that data edit so that's really I suppose I should class that as a hack rather than a, a tutorial because it's not officially supported by Wapler team but it does work I would also say though remember when you finish to go back into production and just put that back to production so thanks for joining me and I hope to uh, you will join me again soon and uh, that's all about environment variables and database collections thank you